Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This question comes as a comment to video 1229 on keeping bonding wires out of the house. Okay, this is my issue, 1974 construction. Our electrical panel is grounded to the cold water pipe inside our house. House. There is not a ground rod at the meter. I'm assuming then that you're saying that the pipe that gets your water from the street is also copper. If it is not, if it's plastic, and a lot are plastic, the plastic's not going to be a good ground for you at all. And fresh water does not conduct electricity very well at all. You'd have to be running seawater through your house, and that doesn't work real well. So it's grounded to that now. There's a couple of misconceptions here. Our electrical panel is grounded to the cold water pipe inside our house. There is not a ground rod at the meter. I want to mount a vertical fiberglass antenna to my roof. Just a simple dual band comet for now. Okay, so we're talking UHF, VHF, small antenna, relatively small antenna, but probably a center fed half wave at a later date. I know I need to install number six copper to a ground rod outside my house to discharge static or hopefully reroute a direct strike. You want this outside your shack, one outside your shack, and then you're gonna bond that up where the meter is to the cold water pipe where it's using it as a ground, but you'll have a ground right outside here. Okay, I uh, also understand consolidate my grounds in the shack into one pipe. I, I've got a little piece of copper pipe right here. It's only about that long, but all the grounds for everything in here go to that pipe. And then there's a wire from there down to my single point grounding panel outside where the lightning arresters are. And of course, all the cables go out to that too. And yes, lightning arresters for the coax at the point it enters the house but it seems disingenuous to then route a second wire from the ground rod outside my home to bond the water pipe. Don't want to allow lightning into my home, right? Any suggestions? If you ground your stuff in your shack, that's gotta be connected to the ground rod outside or it's not really a ground, okay? And in the event of a lightning strike, your utility ground and your shack ground can be at very different potentials. You'd like to keep all your shack stuff at the same potential and connected to ground. Why connected to ground? There are three major reasons. Uh, one is safety, okay. Two is in the event of a lightning strike nearby or static discharge, because as wind runs over wire antennas, it creates static on those wires. That needs a way to get to ground. I blew out the front end of a handheld once because it was connected to a J-pole on the roof and nothing else. And there was no place for the static electricity to run off, so it whacked the front end. The third reason is some antennas just need to be unbalanced and need to find ground, like verticals and so on. So the part about the safety, lightning protection and so on, there are people who have different opinions on that. I'm for the go grounding school of thought. You can read other things who say it's not necessary for the radio reception, it's just necessary for uh, safety. But I have had personal experience with lack of grounding of cables bringing in a lot of noise into the radio. So if you have noise issues, one of the first things you want to check, do you have a proper grounding system? Now, the purpose for the wire over to the ground rod is so that the Grounds can be at the same potential. If they're at the same potential, you don't have so much current flowing between them, okay? So that's why we bond. We don't bring any of the bonding wires inside because they're equipotentiating the ground rods so they'll be at about the same potential. Now, if when you get to become uh, general or extra, you're going to put HF antennas outside. This is where you really start thinking of a single panel ground system where you mount all your lightning protectors. For years, that was at the 
top of a ground rod I had outside where I had all my lightning arresters mounted. I've since moved to a nicer grounding system made by KF7P in uh, Utah. They're, they're quite nice. At one point, they sent me one for a review, and that's the one I've got out there. I highly recommend it. So that's what I do with that. And since your copper piping is grounded also, you want that at one point grounded to the utility ground, which is the one that's done there. Now, I know historically people have said ground to the copper piping. The problem is that if it really is copper, you don't know what goes between the house and the road. And for many, many years, that's been plastic. Okay, that doesn't do you any good to ground to the copper piping. It'll serve as a bit of a counterpoise, but in the event of a lightning storm, you don't want to be anywhere near water in your house. Okay, because that thing's going to come in and energize that copper pipe. Talk to an electrician about this. Maybe you want to have an electrician mount a ground rod where the utility power comes in and disconnect that connection to the copper piping. Can you attach copper piping to a ground rod? Yes, I guess you can. Seems dumb to then route a second wire from ground rod outside into my home to bond to the water pipe. No, you don't want to do that. You want to keep it outside, okay? And find where that wire comes up into the box because it does at some point. Put in another ground rod there. Talk to an electrician. I had my single point ground, grounding panel installed by an electrician because I had to put a hole in the wall to bring the cables in, uh, the protected cables in, and I didn't really know how to do that without really making a mess of things. So that's why I asked an electrician to do that. And no, he didn't do it for free. So there you go. That's what I'd suggest. And until we next meet, 73.